Hey everybody, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome back to our Friday night spotlight devoted to the wizardry of special effects artist A. Arnold Gillespie. And also back are my co-hosts, Craig Barron and Ben Burt, here to tell us more about our next film. It's 1952's Scaramouche with uh, Eleanor Parker and Janet Leigh alongside, of course, Stuart Granger, also Mel Ferrer. So the sword fight, seven minutes plus, I think, at the, near the end of the film is what everybody talks about in this movie. Yes, all through the, uh, the opera house, uh, there are the need of having the audience react or respond to the sword fight while it's happening. So rather than getting all the extras that you possibly wouldn't want to pay for or build a set that would be too expensive, it's augmented with the map painting and painted people watching the sword so fight. What we're seeing here, obviously, you see Ferrer and Granger there having the fight. The people around them on their row in the mezzanine, for mm -hmm. lack of a better term, those are actors. Yes. But everybody above that, that's all painted. That's right, and because they would be painted and not moving, the uh, special effects department came up with a little gag, which was to put a little twinkle on the character. So what they would do is, on the map painting, they would cut out small little holes, and behind it have tinsel that would move, so that little highlights would sort of come in to suggest that maybe somebody's jewels were reflecting, or finery, or glasses, just to give it a little life, so that when you looked at the scenes, it didn't feel like the people were just painted. Yeah, and so obviously the point for an audience is to have their attention solely focused on Granger and Ferrer. Right. But I invite people as they watch this movie here to watch the outer reaches of the screen and what we now know is a matte painting. And that little bit of tinsel d completely makes it seem like people with jewelry, people with elegant costumes are moving around watching what's happening. It's a great trick. So now, the scene itself, uh, this has been true in some other movies that, that we've talked about, Ben. There's no music. The, the, the music in it is the clinking of the swords and the grunting of the combatants and the gasps of the audience. Well put. Uh, in this case, the, the sound effects themselves are what delivers the emotions uh, of reality to the scene, the immediacy, the fact that they're in a theater fencing. Uh, sword fights are a form of dance, really, and the sound of the swords is a rhythm track. It's like a tap dancing track in a Fred Astaire movie. It's, uh, and you want to orchestrate, just like you would with taps, the proper sounds of the swords, and you're not hearing the sounds the swords actually made on the set. These are all sounds uh, recorded after the fact and edited very carefully to synchronize with the action. In fact, on this film, they used the sound of uh, wine glasses, empty glasses chinking together to make a little musical ring, and you can use that in place of the rather duller sound, perhaps, of the real foils that they're holding in their hands. It was bold to do it this way because most uh, Hollywood sword fights up to this time had a rousing score. We know of the Seahawk and the Adventures of Robin Hood. You have very quick sword fights that are two minutes long, and there's a memorable orchestra playing with them. And that's a valid classic way of doing a swashbuckler. But here they took a different approach, um, uh, giving it a little bit more reality. All right, guys, you've revealed the magic, but uh, everybody can still enjoy the film. Thank you very much, fellas. Here it is from 1952, Stuart Granger, Mel Ferrer, Eleanor Parker, and Janet Lee in Scaramouche. <laughs> Thank you. 